Okay, Matthew, that's a very interesting comment because uh, the grand narrative one, we left at the break uh, saying that because obviously as Muslims we're more concerned and we're commanded to be more concerned with the struggle itself and we hope for the result because the result is a manifestation of beauty, it is God's will, but at the same time we don't try to bring about the result in a forceful manner, we're not coercive about it, I think it's Allah's prerogative Islamically to bring about results. But I see how this ties in with, with misrepresentation. I can totally see someone impatient with the situation in the world, not wanting to give people their time in, in absorbing religion, in absorbing the commands. It's not like you didn't you know, have a hard time praying the five prayers at first either, right? You know, I mean, I'm here saying, let's pray five prayers. I spent about a year and a half praying all five at night. And I'm not saying do that, but I'm also saying if you do that, don't be disappointed if your intention is to go up the stairway to paradise. Yeah. If your intention is to sto slowly grow. Right? Because I would literally forget. There, I wasn't saying, hey God, you know, why did you sanction the five prayers at five different times? You should have made them all at night. <laughs> it's not like that at all. It's more like, oh my God, I didn't pray Subh, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and now it's Isha. Let's pray. And that's still my personal best. Uh, the way I see this tying into uh, the greater scheme of this episode and of this show is that some people are impatient and they want the results and they become outward oriented only, they want to see the actions done or else God is not pleased and they don't have that space in the middle that allows for humanity to grow, that is a turn off. If I'm approached by people like that, I will turn away from religion thinking that is religion. Uh, and to be honest, I will bluntly say this, I was turned off from religion thinking it was religion, I was actually turned away by people who were professing to be religious but weren't, for most of my life. And, and at one point when I finally met a person who embodied the faith, Somebody who truly embodied the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually this person was blind and he was 19 years old. And he was sitting there, instead of complaining about his eyesight being taken away from him, Wallahi, and this to me was a weird dichotomy, I didn't really understand, it was antagonistic. He was sitting there telling me how we are ungrateful to God and how he doesn't feel he thanks God enough. I looked at him and I, there were tears in my eyes and my heart, you brought up the heart earlier, my heart was shaken and it became aware of the presence of Allah. If you're going to be a religious person, you're not aware at a higher super-rational level of the presence of God, you're going to turn people away. You're going to turn them off. Misrepresentation. Yeah. Well, Mahaz, let me give you an example of this, this kind of negative, negative approach. Mm -hmm. There was one time I stumbled across a mosque in Washington, D.C., and I was about to start, you know, praying. Okay. And one of the, someone there came up to me and he said, you know, brother, you know, your pants have to be at ankle level. <laughs> Otherwise, your prayer isn't valid. And I was just like, what are you talking about? And I mean, uh, uh, and I think it's just things like that that really, I think, capture. I mean, that's a kind of an extreme example. But it happens. But, yeah. I I'm mean, sorry, it, it happens. There's or a better I'll one. These two guys are okay. praying next to each other. And after the prayer, the guy on the left looks at the guy on the right and says, you know, I counted eight mistakes in your prayer. <laughs> My now, God. What, what does that say about the what prayer? Were you, were you even praying? <laughs> <laughs> or were you yeah. counting? That's, it's amazing, and it tells about, you know what, Shady, I think that's amazing because on the one hand, obviously there's room for wearing what you were wearing to prayer. It's not like yeah. you were wearing anything weird. There's room in Sharia for all of that and sacred law. But also, let's assume for a minute that whatever it is you were doing really was wrong. Like not a knee, yeah. ankle, whatever. Say you, you had a, uh, I hate religion written on your <laughs> pants or something. Well, not that extreme, but yeah. you know what I mean? Some like tattoo, something. Yeah. Is that the first thing you talk to the person about? No, I mean, there's I a mean, certain way to approach it. You have to be, you have to approach things in a very kind of easygoing way. So and do you have to say it on the spot? Do you not need to get to know the person and do it out of genuine love? Yeah. They don't have genuine love. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. I'll tell you a really funny story, right? I remember I was in a taxi uh, in Cairo, and in Cairo we get to know cab drivers' names and stuff. So his name was Sharif. We were driving back. I was with another friend of mine, driving back from Azhar to my place, and then a a, a uh, provocatively dressed woman, lack thereof, whatever, passes by, and it's not very normal in Cairo either, you know, it's not like we're in the West. And she passes by, and my friend and I had just come out of a dars of tezkiyah, a lesson about purifying the heart. Wallahi, I'm not to brag anything, but we weren't even concerned. We didn't even notice her, right? And the cab driver, Sharif, literally looks at her, looks away, looks back and says, Inti atruhi gahannam! You're going to hell. <laughs> You're going to burn, you know. And I was just, oh my God. Well, and Well, maybe you know, he shouldn't be staring in the first place. Well, that's the one thing. But I'll yeah. tell you something funny, Shady, because he parks the car. It was right before we arrived. And I, I didn't want to fall into the same trap of start becoming, you know, condescending in the way I treat him and say, no, you're going to burn for telling her that she's going to burn. So I purified my intention. I paused. I said, Sharif, can I just ask you something? He said, what? I said, did you look at her? And he said, I only got my first look. <laughs> so I said, okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. You have to really contemplate before you answer me. Did you want 
Was there a hidden desire in your heart? Did you want to look at her? He pauses, and then he says, Aywa. You know, in Egyptian, actually yes. And then I say, now let me ask you the following, and this is even deeper. He says what? I say, could it be that your nafs, yourself, your, your lower self, uh, wanted to look at her so much, but because you knew it was haram, it was prohibited, you were so frustrated that you wanted to seek revenge from her. You wanted to bring it out at her, really. And so in an Islamic dress, the thawb, the dress of da'wah, the, the dress of calling to Allah, you brought out your revenge and frustration by saying, you're going to burn. And so the first neural association you get because you're, you're angry is hell. Is, you know, and it's not da'wah at all. And he pauses, he's like, you know what? Wallahi, he said, the kalam kibir awi. That's an Egyptian saying of this is heavy. You literally, and he said, I had no concern for her. Although it looked like I was doing da'wah. I tricked my own self into thinking I was calling her to Allah. I had zero concern for her. All I wanted was to basically, almost like, now this is my analogy, almost like a child, where when they don't get something, they want to break it. Because they'd really either have it or just destroy it. And he just said that, SubhanAllah, you know, what are we supposed to do? And it's amazing because my friend got his contact and he started attending the lessons afterwards and that was an opening. And one last thing I want to say about that is that I didn't want to fall into a vicious circle where he did a munkar. He did a detestable thing, a frowned upon thing in Islam where he actually called her to Allah in a way that was unprophetic. It was actually pathetic, <laughs> right? But had I patronized him, I would have committed another munkar. You're going to go to hell. And then someone else comes up and starts and we get into this vicious circle right. as opposed to having genuine awareness of Allah, of the one we are inviting to, tasting the beauty of Iman in our hearts. Those who look away with the correct intention, the Prophet ﷺ says, they taste the Iman in their hearts and it's sweet. At that moment, you'd want to share the wealth, not curse the person. Yeah. And I think your example points at a larger issue that we're so focused on the superficialities, the outward appearance of religion, that we forget what's really important, the, the, the essential aspect of a religion, the, the inner aspect, the, the inner, heart. The heart. So I think, um, and that's focusing on, for example, the, the, my pants being at ankle level, or always focusing on dress, or is this person wearing this, is she not wearing that? That really takes us away, I think, from the beauty of our religion. Absolutely, and I think that, you know, to close this, inshallah, but we want to have you on more episodes, um, is that basically, I totally agree with you, um, a lot of the talks I give and some of the shows I've had are about the importance of the inward and how the outward actions exist and are sanctioned by Islam and will not be forfeited or let go of or, you know, you don't compromise them at all, but they are means to a higher end, which is the purification of the heart, the awareness of God, the love of God. And I think religious people who are only outwardly religious sincerely need to ask themselves, you know, sincerely this question. Do we really love God? Do we really love the divine? Do we really love the creator? Or is religion a way for us to affirm our own identity by negating others? Do we have what psychologists call negative identity? Do we have to damn, have everyone else damned for us to exist? Or is there a love for humanity? Allah tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We've only sent you and made you a messenger as a mercy to all the worlds. That's what the taxi driver realized. He said, I wasn't a mercy to all the worlds at that particular moment in time. I, it was all about my ego and I projected my ego onto religion. That's what turns away people. When the, e religion, when the ego comes in disguised as religion. But religion itself is obviously the most beautiful thing in the world. But that's the point we're going to try and prove in many episodes to come inshallah because it's going to be very difficult to eradicate this notion and all these neural associations that the lack of religion in religious people has caused. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us success. And we'll see you with another episode of Stereo to Paradise. And salamu alaykum.